So the first question is, you know, is acalabrutinib superior to ibrutinib in the treatment of relapse and refractory COL? And that's a broad-ended question that the Elevate treatment uh, relapse and refractory study tried to address. And this was a randomized phase three study that examined uh, the efficacy of acalabrutinib versus ibrutinib in high-risk deletion 11Q and 17P uh, positive CFL patients. This was a non-inferiority study that was, and non-inferiority studies in general are designed to show that a therapy is equivalent in one area. And in this study, the primary endpoint was IRC uh, progression-free survival while potentially showing differences in other areas that might be meaningful to patients, albeit toxicity or overall survival. So this study included 500 plus patients and you know, with multiple years of follow-up demonstrated in a very decisive way that the progression-free survival of ibrutinib and acalabrutinib, the second generation BTK inhibitor are equivalent with a hazard ratio of 1.0. Inferior, inferiority studies generally point out other things. And what we were able to show in this study in a predetermined way is that atrial fibrillation and flutter was significantly more frequent in patients receiving ibrutinib versus acalabrutinib. There were more discontinuations because of adverse events in the ibrutinib arm and other toxicities were more commonly noted in the ibrutinib arm, including pulmonary pneumonitis, diarrhea, mild bruising, and say, and whereas with acalabrutinib, the toxicities that were more frequently noted were headache and cough. Um, so the, sum, the sum of sort of how we look at clinical data in a meaningful way is how long patients survive. On therapy and survival, while although not significant, favored acalabrutinib with a hazard ratio of 0.82. So, in some, for most patients, the fact that acalabrutinib is equivalent to ibrutinib in terms of efficacy, but has better safety, particularly with cardiovascular things like atrial fibrillation and hypertension, along with irritating long-term side effects that are that are as well more common with ibrutinib. For most patients, acalabrutinib is probably going to be a better treatment for patients with CLL. 